and thanks for staying with us. In the studio with me tonight is Jason Clare, Shadow Minister for Communications. Jason, good evening. Good day, Graham. Now, look, I, there's a, a whole lot of things that I want to I want to take you through, but I want you to take me through something first. There are a lot of people who say to me, "What's really going on with the NBN? There have been so many chops and changes since the coalition were elected and Malcolm Turnbull got the job. Where do you think it's up to now? Where is the government going on this? Well, it's a good question. I, I think the NBN's dead. Uh, we don't really have a national broadband network anymore. Uh, an IT journalist wrote today that really all we've got is a bunch of different technologies rolling out in different parts of the country. We said uh, when we were in government that we'd deliver fibre to 93% of homes across the country. Uh, other homes would get fixed wireless or satellite to provide broadband to their home. Now, depending on where you live, you'll either get fibre to your home or you'll get fibre to a box in the street and you'll have to rely on the old copper network that runs to your home, that runs the, the phone network. But that slows you down. That's right. That's a, that's a lot slower than the fibre that, that we were going to deliver. Then for some people, they won't even get that. They'll get broadband through the coax cable that runs down the street, that runs the, the um, uh, Sky TV, the, the pay TV system, Fox. Then other people will, will get satellite, other people will get fixed wireless. So it's, it's really a, a hodgepodge of different technologies. It's why people like the head of Microsoft in Australia have said, the government's made the wrong decision, they should reverse it and go back to the model that, that we created, the National Broadband Network. Now, I can't find too many people in the industry who think that Malcolm Turnbull's going down the right path, but there were, there were, cause there were a lot of criticism of, of the Conroy model, if I can put it that way, that it, it, it just underscoped the whole thing and, and, and the costs were always going to be greater than what you, you announced. What, what's your comeback to that? Oh, well, first, this is the right project. It's what will set Australia up for the future to compete with countries in our region. There have been some problems with construction, too slow. And we've got to speed up construction, and that's where um, we've still got a problem. The, the government hasn't sped up the construction of the NBN. We need to get it rolled out as quick as we can. The government promised before the election that they would deliver the NBN to everybody by 2016, and that was a, a lower grade, a second rate version of the NBN. Last year they said, well, we now we can't do that, so that's going to be even, even slower. They've said they can't meet their promise to give everybody a second rate NBN by 2016. But now it seems to be there's a third and fourth rate NBN available in some homes. Well, it's not even an NBN anymore, Graham. I mean, you know, it's, it's a whole bunch of different broadband networks and it's potluck. Depending on where you live, you'll either get the first rate system, the second rate system, or the third rate system. Yeah, in a, I mean, I, I don't want to be too critical, but in a government that, that you were a, a member of, a cabinet minister in it, it wasn't going too well. That's why the, the government lost pretty badly. But the NBN remained stubbornly popular, no matter for all the bagging it got. The, I never saw a poll where more than, or I should say, where less than 60% of people didn't still support it being built. That's right. We didn't lose the election because of this issue. People get it. They understand how important the NBN is. In fact, I, I'd argue that people voted for the coalition in spite of their policy on this. That doesn't mean, though, that they were happy in December when they got told that the Liberal Party were breaking their promise to deliver a second-rate version of the NBN. You expect politicians, when they make a promise before the election, particularly Tony Abbott, who's run around the country for the last three years crying out broken promise to honour promises when he becomes Prime Minister. In fact, at his first press conference as Prime Minister, he says, I don't intend on making promises I won't keep. But he's been breaking promises one after another. And this is a big one. This is the sort of infrastructure which will set us up for the future. And wrong decisions now, we're going to pay for them for the next few decades. Yeah, and of course I suppose the big question is, what do the people in our region do? I mean, what are the emerging economies like Korea yeah. doing? Uh, what's Thailand doing? I mean, are, are they adopting similar... South Korea, Japan, Singapore, even New Zealand are doing what we proposed, fibre to the home. Uh, even Malcolm Turnbull will tell you this. He'll say that the end game is fibre all the way to the home, and the question that you have to ask is, do you build it in one stage or two? My argument, Labor's argument, is build it now, otherwise you're going to have to come back and finish the job later. It'll cost more, be more difficult to do it, and there'll be lost productivity because you've built it in two stages rather than one. It's like, for Sydney viewers, they'll know the M5 East. Two tunnels in each direction. It was clogged when it opened. Barry O'Farrell's now made the right decision and said, we're going to expand it. It's what they call West Connects. But it'll be another 10 years before that choke point is fixed. Build it now and set us up for the future. Build it and they will come, as the saying goes. Can we move on then to the ABC, which would be part of your, uh, your portfolio, if you were the minister? Now, 
th this furor that's developed over the, the statements of the, the burned fingers on these asylum seekers. Now, I, I had a look again at the, at the original footage uh, that, that the uh, ABC brought in. Uh, the more I looked at it, the angrier I got because in the end you couldn't run the report they ran on the basis of the evidence they had. Now, Labor has always tended to stick up for the ABC. Uh, and I'm just wondering, are you defending their coverage on that? Well, no, I'm not. I said yesterday, you, if you make a mistake, you apologise. Um, it's not the first time the ABC has made a mistake. A couple of years ago when I was the Minister for Home Affairs, I had serious allegations put to me which I was able to prove were wrong and the ABC afterwards apologised. That's the way you do it. Journalists are going to get some things right and get some things wrong, but if you, if you make a mistake, fess up, put your hand up and apologise. I think on this issue, though, it's been made more difficult because there's unnecessary secrecy here. You know, John Curtin provided more information to the Australian people during World War II than we're getting about this. It would have been a lot easier if the military were able to say, look, we've checked the video footage and this is wrong and being able to provide that information to the Australian public rather than all the, you know, the secrecy we But get. is there video footage? I mean, that, that's the other thing. I mean, one of the things the ABC uh, in the second report, they said, well, uh, the uh, Australian sailors had cameras, so there should be footage of this, but I've never seen any. No, no. Does any exist? I, I don't know. I, I've, I had the privilege of working with our military uh, for three years as a Minister for Defence Material and then Home Affairs, and I've only got uh, enormous respect for the men and women in, the, in our uh, military and in customs. Uh, and when I heard these allegations like you, I was extraordinarily suspicious. I just couldn't believe it. Uh, but I'm sure that if given the opportunity by the government, the military would be able to say, look, we've had a look at the allegations and they're false. But why would wouldn't the government let them do that? I mean, if, if, let's say I'm the government. Wouldn't I be saying to myself, well, we may as well have the ABC, if, if we accept the coalition, pretty much yeah. anti-ABC, and most of them are, whether they want to admit it or not, most of them are. Why not then get the Navy to come out and say, look, here's the footage. Exactly and, right. And therefore, this allegation is a crop from start to finish. But, Graham, they've painted themselves into a corner because they've said, we can't tell you about anything if it happens on the water. This happened on the water, so we can't tell you. I was, I was Minister for Home Affairs for about two years. In all of that time, I never had anybody of any rank in the Navy, in the Air Force, in the Army, no one in customs ever tell me that the information that we we're providing were helping pe people smugglers and we shouldn't put the information out there. This is a crock and it's put the government into a corner that means it can't provide this information when it wants to. Yeah, it, it, I think the whole, the whole secret thing is becoming quite extraordinary. Getting back to the basic question of the ABC though, do you support this efficiency audit if that's what it is? Oh, uh, got no problem with efficiency audits. Uh, all government departments can be more efficient and you've got to find ways to make them more efficient. But the rub here is Tony Abbott before the election said there'd be no cuts to the ABC. So if the audit leads to cuts then he's broken a promise. It means he's lied to the Australian people. So what I'm saying here is if you find efficiencies in the ABC, terrific but reinvest them in more services for the Australian people in the ABC and SBS. If you just use this as an excuse to do what a lot of Liberals want to do which is take the knife out and cut away at the ABC, then it'll go to the integrity of the Prime Minister because he said before the election no cuts to the ABC. If they cut, it's a broken promise. It means you can't believe what the Prime Minister says. Yeah, but I mean, let's look at the Labor government's record on this. I mean, when it came to setting that international service up, and Sky News, the, the place we're sitting in, the, right. the people I work for, they win and yet uh, the Labor government just took it off them. Well, this goes to a question about whether it's going to continue to exist at all, uh, the Australian network. And um, Peter Van Onselen wrote a piece about this on the weekend, about it being a mistake if it goes all together. It's a form of soft diplomacy, sending Australia's message, Australia's voice and a bit of information about Australian culture to our region. If that was to go, I think that would be a grave error. And if it was to be taken off the, off the ABC, then it's a cut. It's a broken promise. Yeah, but it should never have gone to the ABC. I mean, the Labor government made a very serious error here. You don't have tenders if you're not going to award the winner the prize. No, and, and, and Jim Spiegelman spoke a bit about this late last year. The issue here, though, is if it gets cut, does it mean that the Prime Minister's broken his word? And the answer to that is yes. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, unfortunately, of course, for him, he's got to make lots of cuts and he basically promised he wouldn't cut anything. So we'll, we'll have plenty of fun with that. Last question. What about the, the talk of mergers with the ABC and SBS? Now, are we going to look at a, a merger between the two? I don't think that'll happen. 
because there's enough people in the Liberal Party who would be worried that merging the ABC and the SBS would just mean a bigger ABC. <laughs> so I don't think that's going to happen. Malcolm Turnbull said that he doesn't think that's the right model, and I think he's right on that. Uh, Malcolm and I disagree on a lot of things, but I agree that the ABC and the SBS should remain separate entities. OK, Jason Clear, thank you very much for Thanks, your time. Mate. I appreciate it. And we'll be back in just a moment with Josh Frydenberg.